Hey, what's up, guys? Anthony, Tara, and Max here. E3 is over. We killed it. We killed it. We dead. have killed it, I'm and we will. Dead. We will carry E3's corpse through the streets, and garlands shall fall upon it. The women shall weep, and yeah. the men shall gnash their teeth. It's been a long week. Can you guys tell we're really tired right now? We're very now? tired. Um, so, but anyway, the the show is over. The ballots have been counted. All three of our ballots. And we somehow wound up with five nominees for I Best of Show. I don't know how that worked exactly. I voted four times. <laughs> Actually, Max didn't even get to vote. So uh, we're going to run these down one by one for you, and we're going we're gonna to finish up by announcing our best game of E3 2012. Starting off, I think, with a, a super strong one, and one that just was a huge surprise, or announced a huge surprise, Assassin's Creed 3. Yeah, that yeah. was... Uh, Boats, man. Boats. 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 No, I mean, I saw this way back in uh, in February, and I was like, it got me interested in Assassin's Creed 3, mm -hmm. and I was impressed with what they showed then, and since then they've uh, not only, you know, shown off more, they showed off boats. <laughs> and you can pet dogs. Yeah. And, uh, you can and pet then on dogs, top of that, you guys. I mean, this is sort of a, this doesn't really count because it's a separate game, but the fact that they've got an, a, a Vita game going along with it, it's just like... That's that's a, a huge offering on Ubisoft's part for that, and I'm just I'm excited. You know, yeah. it's 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 obviously it's part of the part of the series, but it seems like they're really making a strong effort to try and kind of capture new audience with it. Yeah, I, I think they knew that it was time to kind of revitalize. They they started getting a little formulaic around Brotherhood, and you can tell like when they were doing things like like bomb crafting and tower defense that it was just like we got to throw everything at this series. To see people need to, need and to it, kill it, some it deer. Works, though, like Assassin's Creed hasn't really been on my map before, but it's definitely the type of game where the more you see of it the more interested you are in it. For sure. Uh, Tara, what was your nominee? Funny you should ask that. Because I think we all know. Rayman Legends oh. is amazing. Um, that was definitely the best Wii U game that I checked out. The team at Ubisoft is so fucking talented. Like, the things that they do, the way that they leverage the features of the Wii U, it's it's freaking incredible. And they put a lot more emphasis on music in the game, which has always been, like, a big part of the Rayman series, but it's even more so now. And it's just terrific. I really wish you guys had gotten to play it, but... Uh, yeah, I got, I, I got to stand behind somebody's shoulder as they played it and cry yeah. like a baby. Yeah. But um, it says a lot to me that the things we're most excited about for Nintendo's console are Ubisoft games. Ubisoft killed it this year. Oh, like, they have such a great yeah. lineup. And Far Cry 3. Yep, that's another one. I think of it as another one Far, of our I, that's, I'm going to call that mine. That's mine. I, I think someone someone wrote it down for me, but I, I'm going to say it's mine. It's uh, I love Far Cry 2, but it was, it, was, it was brown, and it was dirty and dusty, and it was kind of grimy. And Far Cry 3, uh, if, if you're going to make a shooter, why not make a beautiful, colorful shooter? Do something different. Throw and, in and some tits and some jellyfish and some and some hallucinations and some rock and roll you know, neon the shooter, laser. The shooter genre is always like over the top, but it's over the top in a very like formulaic yeah. like army super soldier way at this yeah, point. No, and to see uh, some violent way, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I mean it's still ultra violent, but it's do you say ultra violet or ultra violent? Ultra violent, but it's okay. it's like takes itself less seriously, I feel, than most I'm, of the ultra-violent games out there. Yeah, I think what's really cool is the fact is we're at a point where when you're playing a game, you're going to be looking at it for, you know, upwards of 10 hours, more than 10 hours. You're going to be looking at it for a long friggin' time. And there's really no reason it should be, like, just brownish-gray. Yeah. That's dumb. I like or to look at the some same, color. Or use the same, like, I'm part of the military. Let's go from waypoint to waypoint. I'm a Marine in the future. Let's go yeah. from waypoint. This is just like, dude, you're trapped on this island, and it's batshit there. Yeah. Deal with this bat Get out. Shit. It's crazy. Bro, this dude with the mohawk, he's got tribal tattoos and he's a dick. What are you gonna do? You gotta take him out, bro. You should get a mohawk and some tribal tattoos. Fuck oh shit, you becoming a bro like him? Tame a tiger. Far cry. Can you tame tigers in the no. game? No. But no. I think I think you... that's uh, Assassin's Creed 4, unannounced. Yes. Taming tigers. Probably. Uh, yeah, Far Cry 3 looks rad. Next one up on, on our list was Dishonored, which I didn't get a chance to look at. Uh, did you guys get a chance to check it out? Yeah, I got to play it. It was really great. Um, it's I love the art style of the game. It's like steampunkish, but not quite. We were kind of in an inside area most of the time, uh, so I didn't get a, a great feel for like the actual environments in the game. Uh, but it's it's a lot like uh, our producers are saying. It's a lot like the Thief series. It's very strategic, and there's a bunch of different ways to do things in the game. And I had somebody kind of there walking me through it because it it's hard to just like jump into like yeah. it's a complicated game. There's a lot to well, it. Well, hardcore stealth has never been it's easy. It's not yet. hardcore stealth though. It's, it's not strictly stealth. Oh it's, really? It's very 
very open-ended, and that's the thing that should be stressed, is you can play it a number of different ways. You can go through and kill everybody in, in the whole place. You've got superpowers. You can stop time and, and possess somebody and then walk them in front of a bullet and then unpossess them and then suddenly their friend just shot them in the face. Or you can just teleport around and turn and teleport into fish and possess the fish. You can play it all sorts of different ways, and it really seems like they've uh, they've allowed that. Uh, I'm, I'm just... I love the fact that, again... A video game is a thing you're going to be looking at for a long time. Why should the aesthetics not matter? Yeah. And these guys were like, we have the opportunity to make a totally fresh IP, so let's make it look like something that hasn't been done. Like, let's do yeah. something new. I think one of the reasons it kind of flew under my radar when it when it was kind of announced and we got that initial trailer is because a lot of those a lot of those mechanics you're talking about, like the possession mechanics and mm -hmm. things like that, are things we've seen people try to do yeah. a lot of times and just utterly it's either a scripted event or it totally fails at it and it's like oh it's either stealth or it's hardcore action and like i see that as a tagline so many times yeah. that i'm kind of desensitized to it so it's nice no, to see that the game is actually also delivering on that seeing the game in motion and seeing screenshots of it are entirely different things mm -hmm. it's it's got a really neat kind of painterly look and uh yeah i'm excited about it yeah so that uh that leaves us with just our game of the show dun 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 which we'll tell you after this. No, that's something they do on TV to build up suspense. We're just going to tell you it's The Last of Us. Mm. Last of Us is awesome. Yeah. The Last of Us is unbelievable. Yeah. Again, it's pretty. It's beautiful. Uh, it's it's trying something. I mean, it's post-apocalyptic, but they're like, why does it have to be gray and brown? Let's yeah. throw some trees and shit in there. The city, the city environments and everything are just so absolutely beautiful. Naughty Dog obviously has an amazing eye for detail and, to, and for building environments in different locales and for just making characters that you like. The thing I noticed is they also, uh, it, it looks like they've, uh, they're like, what if we had some parts that are quiet? Suspense in a game? That's madness. You can hear Joel and Ellie breathing and if you're hiding, you can hear other people breathing as they're walking around. So I, if you're all like, if you're all just like crunched up, you can hear kind of Ellie like, <sighs> like she's really freaking out, and Joel's intense. like trying to calm her. The thing that the thing that killed me about it is we saw that demo get played through one way, and we saw how brutal that violence is, and we saw how emotional it is, and how you just don't want to kill anybody. Like, why would you want to kill anybody if this, if they're building a real person? Yeah. Why would you want to do that? Well, the main character is supposed to be like a compassionate person, you know? Like, he's not like a criminal or anything. So, it, there's like, you feel empathetic for him. No, there's a disconnect, I think, in video games between like, and even in Naughty Dog, you know, Nathan Drake is this easy, lovable, like, no. easygoing, lovable Nathan guy you Drake want to drink at the bar is with. He's a mass murderer. Exactly. Yeah. But how do you how do you connect those two things? So seeing Joel and this and this is the thing, the behind closed doors demo showed that entire ho hotel sequence again, but he didn't he didn't kill people unless he absolutely had to. So he was just sneaking around, he was trying to keep Ellie safe. You could play that game and try to be the moral guy in the apocalypse, which is always the coolest character in the apocalypse movie anyway. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it, it seems like they've humanized It's neat, really and I'm well. also, I have huge amounts of respect for Naughty Dog for growing up with their audience. They yeah. are not just like, oh, oh, all those 14 year olds who used to play Jack and Daxter, they're, uh, oh, they're grown up. Let's, uh, you know, let's let's just try and reinvent something for 14 year olds. They're like, no, they're, let's. I think you know. Uncharted has proven that they're really good at making these kinds of games. They just need to, like, decide on something that will resonate with people and well, just something that's different and I think I mean, that they, they like achieved that. Like I said, that. they've grown up. They, they went from Crash Bandicoot yeah. to Jack and Daxter to Uncharted and this looks like an R-rated movie for adults. It yeah, does not they look know like, what people want now. Yeah, this is not a PG-13 Michael Bay movie. This is like, this is, it, you feel bad for killing people, you know? Sure. Uh, so we have more videos. We have in-depth videos on all the games that we mentioned and of course a ton of videos from E3 and E3 Week, and we're just gonna keep making videos about these games as we hear more. This is obviously very early for all of these nominees. We should say, playing a game through in its entirety is very different yeah. than playing 15 minutes that they set aside for you to play. But these are these are the games that we think, based on the limited experience that we've had with them, are really gonna wow us in the next year. Yeah. So for more uh, from E3 and for more video game news, be sure to stick with us on Rev3 Games. Subscribe. We love you. I love you. I'm so tired. Thank you.